Hello, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. With an historic look at silver prices over the last hundred years. And looking at this graph and chart that shows actual price of silver over the past hundred years, we can go back before this, and there's been a lot of interesting stuff that has been happening with silver. Uh, in those prior years controversies and the like that I had discussed in a previous video but nonetheless we can see that by this chart of raw price at silver is typically up over this period of time now most of us are not a hundred years old or anywhere close to it uh, but nonetheless you can see that the price has been relatively flat uh, up until the uh, the early 60s uh, and uh, but by and large it's been uh, uh, so if we cut take it and start it from you know about 1960 to here then we can see uh, some movement in the price and see how much it has uh, gone up and down and then we have the two large spikes here that uh, we are familiar with the hunt brothers cornering the market and of course the 2011 um, huge spike in prices and it's quite interesting because both of these periods it, it kind of look the same even though they're totally separate events you have a huge climb and then a huge uh, fall and then a, a resurgence so to speak before it, it goes back down the same thing has occurred over here on this side but by and large it's the macro trends of where silver is going if you take out these two uh, portions, then you'll realize that um, you know it's um, it would have been a steady increase. But I think these two large spikes do say something about silver. You know that if it could go up that high in 1980, um, then after that, from until about uh, 2005 or so or six, um, it stayed relatively flat, but it was much higher than it was before this uh, huge spike. And uh, so that's sort of what we are seeing to a point here. All the volatility is, seems to be much greater as it's, uh, as it's uh, progressed. And so most of the commentary that I've had on my videos uh, negative against silver has been uh, focused around that volatility. Uh, I had one commenter say, you know, that uh, in, um, I guess it was 2012 or something, it was... It was uh, Twenty dollars an ounce, and now it's sixteen. So you've lost out on silver, um, and uh, so it's a losing proposition. And to buy gold, but you know what? Yes, do buy gold, but you can move that mark around anywhere. You know, if it was if it was uh, October, if it was February of two thousand and sixteen, it would have been just under fifteen dollars. And if you cashed out now, well, you've made a You've made almost of two dollars per ounce on silver, and but that's just it. It's not about making money, and that's what people don't don't realize. So let's go back here and take a look at the full chart again, and uh, let's let's put in some different uh, factors here into it. We have this log scale, which uh, gives us a little different perspective on on where it is, on where where silver is, and gives us a slightly different look at, at how. The price has climbed up. We still see our two spikes here, but they're, it's a logarithmic view. And it just goes to show you that, you know, the price is still higher now than it was then. But the problem is, is a dollar thirteen in November 1919 uh, probably means a lot more than um, in September 20, September of 2002 when it was at 466. So that a dollar nineteen was uh, worth a lot more than fourteen uh fourteen dollars or or four dollars or what what have you and that's the thing in the perspective so you have to take into account uh inflation I and mean, here's inflation adjusted prices for silver and uh very very interesting indeed to take a look at that and see where the true measure of value is for your dollar um and for the silver and so with that into account uh, with inflation-adjusted inflation prices, we are about at the same level 
as we were a hundred years ago, um, about 1918. And that's kind of the point I was making in a prior video as well. And really, that's where you want to be. You want to have a stable savings of, of and be able to preserve and protect your wealth. That's the bottom line. And again, I'm not uh, a proponent of, of depleting your savings of fiat cash because in a sense, we are paying the banks to hold it in the banks and in their vaults. Um, really, for all intents and purposes, there really is sort of a bail-in situation going on because with the price of inflation compared to the interest rate on your savings accounts, someone's getting paid and it's not us holding our money in there. That money is there essentially to protect us in case of emergencies. Um, as Silver Hustle 13 had mentioned in a, in, in a prior video he had done about the subject. And that's so important is to have that there, cash in hand ready, disciplined to hold it there. But the backup of the backup, as part-time prepper says, is silver and, uh, and to hold it, and also gold as well. Um, silver, silver is more volatile than gold, uh, but at the same time, it serves really the same purpose. And it's, and it's easier to accumulate. Yes, you will pay somewhat more of a premium for it. But uh, I'd say if you can acquire a little bit of silver at a certain time, uh, it's better to do that than, uh, than to um, if you can't afford to save up for gold. Um, and, and even if you can't afford to save up for, for some gold, I think it's good to hold both and to take advantage of those because of the, of the wide uh, ratio. Um, and again, I've mentioned in a prior video about how those ratios will never see the average, the 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 uh, the mind average or the price averages that uh, uh, we would hope to see someday. I think those days are long gone because of a myriad of factors discussed in that video. But I think we can see here this chart, which again I've referenced before but didn't show. I think tells the tale, and uh, and you know what. My feeling is, is if it goes down in price, let's say, you know, it, it, it goes down to $10 an ounce. I don't think that will happen. But if it does and it's sustained, I think that uh, you will see that the dollar will be strengthened and you'll be able to buy more for your dollar. Now, that may not come hold true right away if it dips down to that point and you need to sell. I mean, there is a chance you could always lose on silver if you purchase high. Like for instance, the purchasing buying high um, is never really a smart move um, um, uh, to buy a whole lot high to hedge your bet on, on a whole lot buy. I think it's always good to buy at any time, but don't break the bank to buy hoping that it's going to get much higher and higher. And I think that was the, the key in 2011. A lot of people had put a lot of money into it thinking it was going to go to the moon. And instead, it went in the other uh, the other direction, and people were sorely disappointed when they went to sell, and they lost half their money in the process because they didn't fundamentally understand what silver is uh, as a protection, as a hedge. And um, same thing with any commodity or anything like that. When you buy high, um, more than likely, buying high will lead to you selling low, um, if not uh, paste or... Uh, kept in perspective. I bought silver at uh, at the high, but I've bought silver at the low as well. It all averages out, and it's about the amounts that you can afford and you can do. I also stopped making some purchases when it was so high because um, I was fearing, well, what if it comes back down? So I was kind of being risk averse there, and it turns out that it did. And um, and uh, it started to come down, so I made a purchase uh, um, and actually cashed out my IRA uh, from work and made a huge purchase of gold and silver. And uh, as it was starting to come down, I didn't think they would come down much more than that. They did. But you know what? I'm holding on to them, and that's the, that's the key. Hold on to them no matter what price you buy. Because if you hold the, hold the metals, eventually it'll pay off, or really in this case, it'll just hold its value. Look at here. Now, 
look, if, as you go through, if I was making this video in uh, 2001, uh, just before the September 11th attacks, um, and I looked at this chart, it would have been a losing proposition for me at this point because it was much lower than here, inflation adjusted. And that's where we have to bring in some economic factors into play. Recessions. There was a recession uh, that year. We we're recovering from a small recession. And so what happens during recessions? Look at what happens here. The prices tend to go down uh, for a moment. And as a recovery happens, the prices come up. It happens every single recession. There's a recession and there's, uh, and there's a dip in prices. And then they, and it comes back up. Um, or in, this, in some cases, the very small ones, they just it stays level. But typically, they kind of level out or or dip, and then they start to go back up. And here, it really started to spike in the early '70s. Of course, oil there was an oil embargo happening in the early '70s, and then it, it, it came back down. And then, in uh, this was an unusual situation from the Hunt brothers. And then what happened was the uh, recession hit in the early 80s, and then boom, the prices fell. And then there was a spike back up and so forth. There's a pattern there, and, uh, and I think that's important to kind of realize and see and to take into account. And so, you know, it, you're, you're, you're still protected. Silver will never go to zero, but there's a chance that um, you could lose out dollar-wise but you uh, may gain back in the strength of that dollar for some items and for some things. Um, you just you just don't know. Um, but by and large, if you hold on to it as a protection uh, against uh, economic instability, you're going to be protected because holding dollars, really, that's the losing proposition. With silver, um, you're much less likely to lose out in your um, uh, in your um, um, savings account, so to speak, because it's going to stay um, pretty much on par. Although there are some obviously some um, variations. There's not an exact correlation with inflation, obviously, uh, for reasons I stated earlier. But but keep in mind, you know what it is and what it's for. And as mentioned in other videos and in my videos, it is a way to save that is fun because there's so many different designs and so many different um, amazing products out there that you can accumulate uh, with silver. It's a, it's a way to save that you can enjoy. And, um, and to me, that's worth, that's golden to me. It's pretty amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend the multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.